Good morning. It's Friday morning live, and I am here with you, Mary Judd Wisiak, with Holding the Hope here in Holding the Hope Central in Battleground, Washington. Just wanted to continue with our conversation this month about suicide prevention, which is a huge part about recovery, because if you don't stay alive, you can't get well. And we know that people can that people do get well. So we want you to remember that. Now, um, I'm here today and we're going to pick up where we left off last week. Now we talked about the facts. Do you remember? Like, how do you know if it's, uh, if it's okay to ask somebody about suicide or to like, how do you, how do you know? So, um, we have this little sheet here that I posted on my website. So go to holding the hope dot com under resources and you'll find lots of suicide prevention resources but also um, this which is the facts feelings actions changes threats and situations so these are you kind of look at those things are they feeling hopeless um, are they acting differently are there changes in their behaviors and changes in their sleeping patterns eating patterns sexual behavior are they saying things like y'all be better off without me um, and then has, uh, has there been some kind of a situation recently, some kind of a loss? So if those things are all going on in a person and they're, and you're just, there's a part of you, your intuition is saying, ah, geez, something's not right here. Then, um, then we, then we go to the next step, which we talked about last week, which if you remember is what care, right? We're going to care. And last week we talked about connecting with the C A R E connect, ask, refer, encourage. And we talked about connecting with a person because it's so important to actually be with someone um, during suicide prevention. And I posted an article earlier th uh, this morning on um, this Facebook page about a young man who talks about how his father's words to him were, I'm here with you and I'm going to stay here with you and you are not alone. And so when you connect with someone, it makes such a huge difference in their life and in yours too, right? So, but today now we're going to go into A, which is ask. Now, some people think, especially school administrators think, uh, if we ask the question, if we start talking directly about suicide, then we're going to somehow cause a person to think about suicide, or we're going to plant a seed in their mind that suicide is an option. And what we know is that asking directly about suicide saves lives. Really? Yes. Imagine this. You may or may not really want to die, but you can't stop thinking about suicide. And you're in a lot of pain. But you really, you have no one to talk to because it's one of those things that people freak out when you mention people are, because it's, it's such a scary topic. It's such a taboo topic. And so, um, hang on. Oop, there we go. Nope. Ah, my, my screen's doing weird things. So I digress. Sorry. So when we ask about suicide, holy cow, directly and clearly, my phone's ringing. Oh my gosh. Right. Okay. Sorry, Peggy. I meant to turn that off before we started. I'm a little distracted this morning in case you haven't noticed. Okay. Asking directly about suicide. When we ask directly about suicide, we give the person permission to talk about it. We can help them relieve their uh, distress. We can help them relieve that 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 pressure that's building up inside where they don't have anyone to talk to. Imagine you're literally trying to decide whether or not you should stay alive. Seriously, shh, life and death situation. Trying to decide, should I stay alive? And um, somebody asks you about suicide. Somebody says to you, I'm worried about you. I imagine the relief that you get when you actually get to express what you're feeling. You actually get to say how you're feeling and people, because you figure, well, if they're willing to ask about suicide, they must be willing to hear about suicide. And that's the key, right? Is we have to listen. We don't have to try to fix it. We don't have to try to give advice. We don't have to try to, to determine how they can best have a good life. We just have to listen to somebody. We just have to come alongside people where they are and be with them where they are and who they are right then and right there. 
So if I could make it like Carl, that would have been nice, but it's not, it's care. Because part of asking is listening, right? But there, I couldn't really get the L in there. I know a lot of nice Carls, but it just doesn't, doesn't have a nice ring to it, does it? So when we talk about asking, we also have to listen. That's part of asking. Is You ask the question, you listen to the answer. And the next question after, are you thinking of suicide, is not, do you have a plan? Because that just says, I want to try to fix this right away and figure out how bad it is. That whole conversation comes later. Right now, I want to know. I want to talk to you about how you're feeling. I want to talk to you about what you're, what, what's going on in your brain. I want to know how you're feeling and what brought you to the spot. When a person talks about suicide, the, the process of having taking those thoughts and putting them into words takes time and brain energy and brain chemistry that can change the way things are. And when they're focused on something, they're not, they, your brain can't focus on two things at the same time, right? So if they're talking to you, they're not obsessing about suicide. Now, how do you ask about suicide? It's like, oh my gosh, that's such a horrifyingly terrifying question. It can be a really scary question. I call it the no dodge question. It has three components to it. It's a yes or no question. This is not the time to say, well, what do you think will your mother would say if you were trying to, no, no. We want to know, are you thinking of suicide? Because if you are thinking of suicide, then we need to talk about suicide. So it's a yes or no question. It, we use the word suicide. We don't use words like hurt yourself because that's a whole different behavior, right? We use words like suicide, kill yourself, die. It's a very direct question. It's unequivocal. There's no dodging what that means. And um, it's in the present tense. Right now, are you thinking of suicide? And when I work with young people, I always say, you know, anything that isn't a no, that you really believe, like, you really believe that they are not thinking of suicide. Clearly, they still need some support and some help because there's something going on, but it's not suicide. Anything other than that, we treat like a yes. So if someone says to you, who do you think you are asking me a question like that? That's none of your business. That's not a no. Or if they say something like, do you promise not to tell anybody? That's definitely a yes, by the way. So. Let's talk about that for a minute. What happens if we promise secrecy? Well, unless you're a master's level clinician or a physician or a psychiatrist that can prescribe, you don't have what this person needs. Suicide is a medical issue that requires medical intervention. When a person is that depressed, they need some kind of a medical intervention or a mental health intervention not necessarily hospitalization or any of that, but they do need to be looked at um, and seen and supported by um, somebody who can rule out physical, uh, physical things that might be going or maybe a drug interaction or something that might be causing this. Unless you have those kind of credentials, you're not qualified to give your friend or your or colleague or your, this stranger that you're talking to all 100% of the support that they need. So if you promise secrecy, you're actually doing the person a grave dis dis disservice. You're actually really hurting rather than helping. I know we think that we're being really good friends by maintaining the secrecy and by taking on this burden ourselves and being the hero and helping this person in their life. But that's not helpful. That's not helpful to them. What they need is somebody to help them connect with services and somebody who's going to encourage and support and listen to them as they go. And we're going to talk about that the next couple of weeks. But right now we're talking about asking and we're talking about um, the difference between keeping a secret and keeping a confidence. And you can say to that person who doesn't want anyone to know, I get that you don't want anyone to know. And how about if we only tell the people that you pick? Well, we got to tell somebody because I'm not enough. I, I don't have what you need. So we got to tell somebody, who would you like that to be? Or let's go to 
the counselor, the school counselor, or let's go to the peer respite center, or let's go to uh, uh, wherever it is that you know this person is connected. Maybe it's their church, maybe it's their family, somebody that can help connect them on again with the services that they need. So we're gonna ask that question. We're gonna listen to the answer without trying to fix. That's so hard, oh, that's hard. We really wanna jump in there and go, well, what about your mother and what about your kids and what about your husband and don't you know how much we love you? And trying to make people feel guilty so that they'll stay alive, it's not helpful. Um, trying to make people scared of hell so that they will stay alive, that, that doesn't really work. Um, so what we, what we really need to do is just be present with people and listen and then connect them with the services they need. But that's what we're gonna talk about next week in depth is we're gonna talk about connection and how do we do that. Um, if you're worried about somebody uh, who's thinking of suicide, don't wait for the next couple of weeks for me to teach you all the details of this. I want you to go and ask that person directly about suicide, listen with them and then and then get them the support they need. If you or somebody you know is thinking about suicide, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, 1-800-273-8255 or 1-800-TALK is a fantastic resource for the person who's thinking of suicide or the person who's in a lot of pain and distress and also the person who wants to support them. You can call that number and say, I'm worried about my Johnny Joe. I'm worried about my friend. I'm worried about my neighbor. I'm worried about this woman on the bus who just, I just feel like I'm called to talk to her and I don't know what to say. These people can help you. They can help you find resources in your area. They can help you determine uh, if your gut is right. They can really help you a lot. 1-800-273-TALK, National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Don't wanna talk to anybody? Feel like texting? We got you covered. 741-741, text help or start or hello to that number. And they are also a suicide prevention text line and they will help you also to stay alive. We want you to stay alive. We want you to help your friends stay alive. Everybody has a role in suicide prevention. You don't have to have any kind of a master's degree or any kind of a, a professional degree um, or anything other than a, a big heart to ask somebody directly and clearly about suicide. Are you thinking about killing you yourself? Are you so sad that you're thinking about killing yourself? One way to kind of have an introduction to that conversation is to say what you see. Because we noticed that in the connecting section, right? Listen, here's what I've noticed. I've noticed that you've been feeling really sad. I've noticed you've been acting different. You've been wearing the same clothes for three days. You're late for work. Your homework is not what it should be. I've noticed that these changes in your behaviors. I've noticed you've been drinking a lot. I noticed you've been behaving in a way that isn't typical of who you are. Um, sometimes when people do that, it's because they're super depressed and they're thinking of suicide. Is that what's going on with you? Are you thinking of suicide? So we can make it so it isn't like such a random out of the blue sky question, right? We can just simply kind of tie it to what we're seeing. If we say what we're seeing, and, and then sometimes when we, that happens, it's because a person is thinking of suicide. So is that what's going on with you? I'm having a weird hair day, although I think it looks pretty good. Thanks, Debbie, good hair. <laughs> I'm talking about suicide, it's a hard question. I find myself um, you know, going off in all these different directions because it's a difficult conversation, even for me. So talked about the facts, feelings, actions, changes, threats, situations, right? We've got the facts. Download that from the website, holdingthehope.com slash resources. And then what do you do? You care, connect, ask, refer, encourage. Ask directly about suicide. It's a yes or no question. We use the word suicide. We use the word kill yourself. We don't use euphemisms because we want that person to know we're willing to talk about this. We're gonna say that word and we're gonna hear the answer. Inside, you might be a little nervous, that's okay, right? We don't have to have all the answers. We just have to ask that question and give that person the opportunity to speak. Anybody can do this, right? Or if you're, if you're not comfortable asking that question yourself, but you've noticed somebody and your gut is screaming at you that this person is in trouble, go to somebody else and say, 
I think we should go together and talk to this person. Or could you go talk to him? Here's what I'm seeing. Um, or something like that. But don't let it go. Bring it to somebody else's attention if you don't feel capable of asking the question directly. Have somebody come with you. Asking the question is going to save a life. That's the bottom line. And here's what I will tell you. Um, there is no right way to, there's no, there's no perfect way to do a suicide uh, conversation. They just are interesting conversations um, and they go a lot of different ways. And, and the person, you might notice that they start fading away and then you just kind of go, oh, you know what? I wasn't listening. Uh, tell me more. Or I got scared. Tell me more. I mean, we're going to have these ups and downs. We're going to have missed connections. We're going to have, uh, in, in a workshop that I do, they, it's called being out of sync. It happens. There's no such thing as having a perfect conversation about suicide, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. That doesn't mean to not do it. It means that's all the more reason to do it because it's going to show that you are human and that you are willing to step up and risk a little bit of discomfort in order to save that person's life, to have that conversation with them, to sit with them, to be with them, to listen to them. That's what is so easy and yet hard all at the same time. You don't have to have a master's degree to sit next to somebody and listen to them, but you do have to have patience. So it's a lot to talk about today. Suicide prevention. Um, this it's suicide prevention week this week. Today's the last day. So it's kind of a, by extension, suicide prevention month. And I really, uh, again, I just want to emphasize every County has national suicide prevention hotline. Um, I mean, every County has a crisis line. And then of course, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, 1-800-273-TALK. Um, so if you or someone you know is thinking of suicide, please call that number, 1-800-273-TALK. Or if you prefer to talk to somebody locally, just Google you know, Clark County Crisis Line or whatever county you're in, you know, Grant County Crisis Line, uh, and, and you'll find it. And call those people. They want to help. They know how to help. They can help you help. So ask the question directly about suicide, save a life, you can do it. We are all holding the hope for each other. And that's the most important thing. So it's Friday morning here, uh, it's September. It's September already, can you believe it? It's like September 14th. We're halfway done with September. It doesn't seem possible to me. Last I looked, it was still June. But it's September and it's Friday afternoon. I have got an old friend She's not old. We're not old. I've got a longtime friend from Ohio coming to visit this weekend. I'm very excited. My good friend from high school, Joellen Busby, is going to come and 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 uh, visit her family that lives here in Battleground. How awesome is that? So we're going to get together and have dinner. I'm super excited about that. I hope that you also have an amazing weekend. And um, stay hopeful. <laughs>